Dear viewers, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, tonight we are joined by a very, very special guest, um, Professor Victor al Kek, who was born in 1936 in Beirut, uh, in Lebanon, in a Christian family. He holds three PhDs um, in, in, in Persian literature from Iran, where his first PhD, uh, also Arabic literature from Lebanon, and history of civilization and philosophy from France. I mean, achieving this much uh, in one's life is actually a very big achievement and must be an inspire, inspiration to everyone who, um, who, who, who is on the, on the route of, of studying, on the route of knowledge, that then you know that knowledge does not actually, does not have an end, does not have a limit. Um, and inshallah, we'll have a word with him. He used to teach in high rank universities in the United States, France, um, Iran, and uh, many other countries, including Lebanon as well. Um, he can speak three different um, languages, four, sorry, different languages, um, Arabic, fluently English, and, and, and French, French and Persian. Um, and he has a lot of researches about Islamic and uh, Islamic history, and the history of, of the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. And Imam Hussein, in particular, um, I, I have, I've, I've actually heard many of his um, researches about Imam Hussein, salamullah alayhi, and he also, in many occasions during Muharram, he always teaches um, the, 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 the teachings of Imam Hussein, and also um, he has kindness for Imam Ali and Nahj al the peak of eloquence. Inshallah, we are joined by the professor him, himself. It's a true honor to mm -hmm. have you amongst us. Thank, thank you very you much. Thank you very much for your introduction. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, just a quick question, why why have you started the research in Islam and Ahlul Bayt? Well, you know, as I was born in Lebanon, in a Christian family. In Lebanon, we live together, Muslims and Christians, from at least 1,200 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially we, I mean, as by father and mother, we didn't live always in Christian areas. My father used to move from region to region in Lebanon. Most of our moves were in Islamic uh, places, I mean, wow. or vill big villages or towns. And he had many friends, many Muslim friends. When we opened our eyes, myself and my brothers, I have two brothers, when we, all, we always used to see Muslims and sheikhs in our home. Wow. So, and uh, I was influenced by this milieu. And then when I <laughs> arrived in my secondary school uh, to the baccalaureate class, we call it in Lebanon, and at the end of the secondary, I used to read every, every day the Quran, the Holy Quran, wow. and Dahj al <clears throat> uh, I did I'm still in the secondary school. So I, when I arrived to university to prepare my licence, um, you know, we call it licence because we mostly are French education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, English for me is my fourth language. Yeah. It's not the second or the third. So uh, this uh, love for Al Bayt, for uh, especially the Imam Ali, was increased. Wow, was going increasing and increasing. And the personality of Imam Ali really impressed me a lot. Uh, personality, uh, we'll talk about it, but now uh, answering your question. Then uh, um, uh, I got my PhD from Iran because, uh, you know, I used to know the Persian literature translated into Arabic or French mm -hmm. before I went to Iran. So when I wanted, my parents were, wanted to send me to France to prepare my first PhD, I didn't accept, I apologized and I chose Iran. Okay. And I went to Iran. In Iran, you know, uh, Iran is a Shiite country, do your descendant country. And so I was very happy because I was discovering more and more about Imam Ali, about the Shia, and especially really I say to God thanks a lot because I 
studied the Persian also philosophy, mm -hmm. Persian Islamic philosophy, Mullah Sadra, Mir Damad, etc. And usually in the Arab country, they know nothing about them. They believe that the Islamic philosophy stopped with Aver Rawas, Ibn Rushd, which is not true. Because Mullah Sadra in Iran after him continued uh, the Islamic philosophy and in the, in the Arabic language, he wrote in Arabic. But Arabs at that time didn't, uh, they were not aware about Mullah Sadra, even, he wrote, even though he wrote in Aram. So, uh, and then the values that fight, uh, fought Imam Ali for them, the Islamic values, the humanistic values, impressed me uh, a lot. I said to myself, well, he is not only a Muslim, this man, he is a universal of person. Course. So, definitely, yeah, mashallah. So, you spoke that one of the personalities that you have a um, deep love for is uh, Imam Ali, right? Yes, Can of you course. Explain to us why that's why, because really, uh, of course, uh, he has a, a united personality. But if I allow to myself to say that he had two faces the face of the uh, uh, of a believer in Islam, I mean, and he was safe for Islam, uh, as we say in Arabic, of course, but he had um, another face that was, uh, we call now humanistic. When he appointed Malik al-Ashtar mm -hmm. as a governor to Egypt, he told him textually, he told him, uh, you have to use, to, to use mercy with the people of Egypt. If they are Muslims or not Muslims, because non-Muslims, he meant Christians, they are the same as Muslims. They are at the same level. It wasn't said before him and after him in the whole history of Islam. And he appointed Fadik al-Ashtar to applicate this. And then Imam Ali, when he was killed, uh, by an unknown, I mean, Abdul Rahman Buljam, we know the name. Uh, he uh, showed mercy to, to, his own to him. Imagine that. I mean, and then once somebody um, said bad words to him before that event, and then he was very, very merciful upon him. I mean, these values that Imam Ali practiced are human values. He says, I, I could say, I mean, excuse me to use the term, he was more, more, more far than this, but a superman. I mean, a superman in the philosophical yeah, sense. Of course, of course. He was not an ordinary man. Mm -hmm. And if I say this, I am not exaggerating. Why? Because the Sufi order, as you know, and the Irfan, I mean, the higher highest rank in the uh, Sufi order, uh, they believe in the uh, perfect man, an insanun kamil. The perfect man uh, was Imam Ali, the perfect man. They believe that Imam Ali also was a perfect man. When they drew the perfect man, the Imam Ali was in their mind. And why? Because they believe that Imam Ali inspired all the Sufi orders. And it's right. Yeah, it's true. And till now in Iran, when even when they make sports, I mean bodybuilding or other things, sports, mm -hmm. they become by praying, I mean, and, uh, and uh, um, pray, praying and um, venting the ideology of Imam Ali. Bismi Imam Ali and so on. Mm -hmm. So they are related to him. Yeah. So he is the perfect man and inside the camel, yani when we say now superman. Of course. Of yeah. course. An ideal. Well yeah. let's say an ideal.
of course and yeah. a lot of people that are with not not even within Islam or every single religion they actually mm. all have some source of uh, of uh, of an explanation about a courage mm. of one person that came out from Arabia yeah. mm. and a lot of research actually proves that this this such person That's is right. Imam Ali um, Professor, what are the main similarities and bases which lead amongst us and the Christians? Um, and can you give us some sort of examples? Mm. Let me start really with uh, Imam Ali also, mm -hmm. because the source is Imam Ali. In the Lahjul Balagha, the famous book uh, gathered by Sharif al Radi in the Abbasid period, mm -hmm. he gathered all the speeches of Imam Ali and letters and so on. Imam Ali has a few lines praising the Christ, Jesus Christ. Yeah. In these few lines, uh, nearly six lines, uh, it's, uh, as they say in French, of the classicism, the art of litot. I mean, mm -hmm. all meanings, all the personality of Jesus Christ was drawn there in these six lines. And he praised uh, the Christ, uh, extra or it was an extraordinary praising. So I think Christians from that time, well, they know about uh, what Imam Ali said because it was a speech. And so they appreciated a lot, beside of the fact that Malik al Ashtar, when he appointed him as Egypt, and he ordered him to treat the Christian as well as the Muslims. So all this, uh, I mean, this value, I can say, this value of looking to, to persons, to other religions like that, this value uh, pushed the Christian to like, to love Imam Ali and to respect him a lot. Then, after that, in the Abbasid period, the Imams, I mean, uh, Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq and others, mm -hmm. and uh, Imam Riza also, alayhi mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he they used to have dialogues, many dialogues, with the biggest authority of Christians, mm -hmm. which was called the Catholicos, like patriarch now, yeah, yeah, patriarch, yeah. Uh, or the Pope. So it was the whole and the highest authority of the Nestorians the Christians and so on. So, uh, you see, an Imam who is Masoob, he comes and at the same level, he discusses matters of religions, Christian, Muslim religion, of course, of course. with the highest authority. Uh, imagine what sympathy, what, I mean, uh, I, can't, I can't describe this, you see. Of course. So, of course, all the Christians who lived in the Abbasid periods were uh, were seeing this, were hearing this. Huh? And so uh, uh, this, uh, I mean, communication, I can say, with Christian and Muslim, especially Shia, yeah. um, uh, goes to that time. Yeah. And after, that's why also in the period of Nahda, in the 19th century, the Christians in the Arab world made the new Nahda, yani the new Renaissance. Yeah. So all these people, Christian people also, used to pray Imam Ali. And now, if we make um, a statistic, uh, what the Muslims, even the Shiite Muslims, wrote about Imam Ali <laughs> and the Aimma and what the Christians of Lebanon, Syria, especially Lebanon and Syria and Iraq, and Jordan also wrote about Imam, Imam Ali and al -Urban. You see, you can see the similarity. Well, they most about maybe, they wrote about 80% wow. about Imam Ali, the Christian, and the Muslim, 20%. Wow. So why? I mean, it's a phenomenon because it has an historic uh, background mm -hmm. going, uh, going up to the Imam to the life of Imam of course, Ali himself. Of course, definitely. That's why in Lebanon we lived, we lived in the same villages, Muslim, Shia, and Christians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't find the, this phenomenon, for example, with other sects. Uh, in Beirut and other big, uh, uh, big cities, of course. everybody lives. 
but the mountains and the villages, it's very significant mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that Shia and the Bekaa in South Lebanon, for example, live together in the same, in the same village. They share, uh, they share marriages, they share everything together. Mm -hmm. I mean, of they course. take uh, holidays together. Yeah. You see? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Alhamdulillah. I mean, you, you can see in, in every single um, um, religion, especially in Islam or Christianity, each big, big figure that you have within the religion, they both have the same similarity of personalities, yes, yeah. whether they're kind, generous, giving, of loving, course. you know. Um, so it's beautiful how you can actually draw um, different personalities and bring them together. Mm. And you can see the love uh, that God, how much is actually put into the world, but how much similarity is put into um, these different figures that yeah. we have right now. Yeah, uh, a... Professor, as an experienced researcher, in different civilizations, what are your recommendations of solving the problems of contemporary on this contemporary world? I think we have to back to religion. Yeah, we hear many voices there. Put religion aside. aside yeah. Now look to the to Europe. When they were uh, writing the uh, the um, I am what we call I mean uh, uh, the Dastur, yani. Mm -hmm. And what we call an Arabic Dastur, and in Iran, for example, in Persian, Mashrutiyat, and in the Constitution, the Constitute Constitution of, of, of Europe. Mm -hmm. All countries, all European countries, refused to put the name of Allah in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Imagine. Mm -hmm. And here the Oriental people say the West Christendom. They mm -hmm. don't exist. Mm -hmm. They don't believe in God. In their constitution, God has no place. Of course. In their life, God has no place. They uh -huh. became laïque, as they say in France, for example. Laïque doesn't mean that they don't live in God, but practically, they don't live. Of course, there are good Christians who go to church and so on. But most of the churches sometimes there and in Canada are sold and they are building apartments in the churches. Imagine, mm -hmm. imagine that. They lost their values, the value of family. They live together before they get married. Hmm? They live with many, uh, a young man live sometimes with two, three, four women, mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. of course. Oh, okay, and that's why you have big cases, big number of cases of separation, talaq. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah and definitely. the children. You have single mothers and, and, and the and children. The, children the problems of children. Exactly. That's why in the States and in Europe, you see sometimes they kill, when somebody enter in a school, he kills 10, uh, 10 students. He is banned. Why he is banned? He has no support in his family, mm -hmm. nor from his mother. No love. No love. Love. Children need love. love exactly. So if we go to, to religion, look at Islam in, in the Quran. He recommends to respect the mother and the father, to help them. Of course. <laughs> وإذا المؤودة سئلت بأي ذنب قتلت. These are values for the family, for the, uh, I mean the uh, psychology, the yeah, psychology within, within, of every yourself, person. Yeah. The, uh, isn't it? Mm -hmm. They grow if a normal family, Muslim family or Christian family, they grow with these values. Now of there course. are no values. Mm -hmm. And if you talk about values, they say, oh, what is he talking about? Yeah. So to solve the problem, is like we go back to faith, because faith orders us to love the other one. Mm -hmm. Even I was talking about the Imam Ali. He, he gave the pardon to his killer. Amen. When they live in such a society, justice is, is, I think is justice beautiful. will prevail. Yeah, yeah. Justice is very essential in Christianity. Anti-Islam, Al-Adala. Of course. 
before the liberty, because liberty, if there is no justice, you can't protect liberty in the society. If there is no justice, huh, you can't Definitely. protect liberty. Definitely. So go back, let's go back to our um, Christian values, Islamic values, and I think this is the way to save what we are really enduring in, in, now, now, now yeah. in this society. Of course, Professor, um, w another, another question that I have, a pers uh, which is for me, this question, I think, um, in the, it's more of an opinion from your side as, 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 as you have reached such a stage. I would love to hear, and I'm, I'm sure the viewers also would love to hear your opinion on why at the moment religion even Christianity and Islam, that we are, we are running through a problem where it's been modernized to the generation that they're living now. Mm. So, um, so for instance, we have problems. The elders, they wouldn't, they, they, they would, they, they would and the more it gets modernized, the more that the, the, the generation pass on a more modern religion. But this is where the problems, I think, occur. When, when, when the religion itself becomes modern to a generation where you live in. This is why we have Muslims who, who, who are going through divorce or who are going through um, different kind of problems. Same with Christianity. So what do you think about how important it is to deliver the right message to the youth that are growing up well, in the really, West? You are, you are right. This is, this is an essential problem. We have to modernize our commentary on the Quran. Mm -hmm. I mean, why to stick to the commentary of persons who lived in the Middle Ages? We respect them. Of course. By that time, they gave all what they could to explain the Holy Quran. Exactly. But we are, as Imam Abu Hanifa said, as we know, Imam Abu Hanifa was the, uh, was the student of Imam Jafar al-Sadiq. Although he is to die, I mean, he is between the four, Mm -hmm. So nine, mm -hmm. let's say Imam in Fiqh, yeah. but he was the student of, of the Islam. Imam uh, Jafar Sadiq. So he said, "Nahnu rijal, wa hum rijal." We are human beings. Yes, I they yeah. are, meaning they uh, critiqued him that he passed away the teachings of the Sahaba, the companions mm -hmm. of the Prophet. He said, I respect them, but we, they are men and we are men. Why? Because the society in the Abbas period was similar to our modern society. Many religions, many sects, many people, Aryans, Semitic, Jews, etc., etc. So it was a really a problem. It, this society had a big, big problems. They didn't exist in the beginning of Islam, suddenly Islam. So now we are more, our life is mm -hmm. more complicated. Youth, you have to satisfy the mind of the youth. Of course, of course. So you have to make a new commentary on the Quran. Definitely. The Christian people, especially the Catholic and the Protestant, made this. They started about a half a century ago, exactly. modernizing the commentary of the uh, Bible, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. and especially the Gospel, of course, yeah. indeed. So we, we don't have problem. For example, we used to uh, to fast 40 days. Not only uh, eating uh, meat was forbidden, even eating eggs, mm -hmm. eating uh, many dairy uh, products. Uh, products. Mm -hmm. Now, no. Uh, the Vatican said, you are not obliged to make all this. Why? Because people go to work. In the past, they used to live, well, uh, a simple <laughs> life. Simple life. Yeah. Now you have to uh, raise up at 5 o'clock to take your children maybe to school. Sometimes there is an auto car. Then to go to your work, to return, uh, to return around 6 or 7 mm -hmm. o'clock. Mm -hmm. So you don't have time of course. for your uh, family. If we modernize and the commentary, we don't teach the Holy Quran or the Gospel, but the verses, but modernize the commentary so the youth will be satisfied. Of course. We have, there. We have to make this. Mm. In Islam, till now, it didn't happen. It must happen. 
if we want Islam to satisfy the Islamic youth, we have to do this. Inshallah. Uh, doctor, where can we find your researches? Um, well, uh, most of my researchers are out of print, okay. unfortunately, uh -huh. most of them. Okay. I wrote in English, I wrote in French, I wrote in Persian and in Arabic. But now I'm making an effort to make a new edition. I didn't want to make reprint. I wanted mm -hmm. to make a new a edition. New, a new edition. So it was a fault, it was a mistake. I had to reprint them. And then when I have time yeah. to make a new edition, but it happened. And now uh, I am working on re-editing all my researches, uh -huh, really. Uh -huh. Some of them were published in Iran, some of them in France, some of wow. them in Lebanon. Okay. Inshallah, Inshallah. <laughs> I Inshallah. make this. It's a true honor to Thank have you, you with us today. And a uh, true inspiration you give to uh, everybody. I mean, I'm sitting here right now full of energy um, from, from what I've heard. And uh, I hope to see you very soon. And um, I'm, I'll, I'll be looking forward to reading your researches, you. inshallah. I say that it's a baraka, as we say in Arabic, from Imam Hussein and Imam Ali, because I uh, was invited to Karbala and uh, to Najaf. Mm -hmm. And it's my first trip to Najaf wow. and Karbala. Wow. I used to come often to Baghdad for, uh, I mean, uh, uh, conferences yeah. and so on. Yeah, yeah. And I always hoped to come to here. Come. Yeah. But, you know, life is difficult. I traveled over the world many times and so on. Now I am happy. I say it's a baraka, really. And I hope uh, what the Iraqi did to their brothers, Christian brothers, mm -hmm. uh, here during the last time. Uh, you know, we know course, all, course, we yeah. all know yeah. what happened to Christian, to Yazidi mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. others. So, especially Iraqi people and especially Shia people Curious. hosted their brothers at their homes and helped them. So, this is Islam. This is the so true Islam. Teachings, teachings. Uh, from Imam Ali. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Shukur. Brothers and sisters, um, Dr. Vector, um, a true inspiration to us. And it's an honor to have you once again on, on, on the show. And hopefully it's not the last time uh, you. that you make your visit to Karbala and Najaf. And uh, inshallah, we'll, we'll see more from Dr. Brothers and sisters, this is the, the end of the, um, of the interview. And uh, we thank you for watching and hopefully stay tuned, stay tuned to any more of the professor's researches and hope to see you soon, inshallah.